So welcome back to Newcastle Central. I've been pretty busy out here on the train shed. I've got the rest of the signal lights all fitted on that south side of the station now. Got all the shift registers wired up. Got everything connected into JMRI and started to play with some logic in JMRI which is designed to figure out, okay, if you have um, state of various different routes at multiple routes, how am I going to be able to track uh, the state of the lights? And it's really for this signal gantry right here. Um, so this signal gantry that spans uh, three lines on that south side of the station, um, because there's technically multiple different routes that can go through there, I can't just say, okay, based on you know platform 8 wanting to go out southbound or platform 10 wanting to go out southbound, figure out what we want to do on those lights. I have to try and determine, okay, well, it could be platform 9, 10, 11, and 12 southbound. That will then uh, set that very far right uh, light on that three-way gantry to green. So that was kind of interesting to play with. So let's have a little bit of a look around just so we can explore some more of what's been going on. I'm going to keep this one fairly short. I'm not going to get technical into GMRI or electronics. I just want to show some of the signal gantries now that they're all in place, some of the see some of the lights in action, and see some trends moving around, because I think it's pretty cool now. So this is what's hopefully the final revision of this main signal gantry on the southbound side of the station. I had uh, done a quick prototype of this before Christmas and had the lights the wrong way around, but now I think I've got them... <laughs> The correct way. I've also put the theater route indicators up on top. And I think this looks pretty prototypical. I'll try and put a picture up on screen now, which I know I've shown before, but that's kind of what I was going for with the signal gantries. This is just one of the DAPOL signal gantry kits. This isn't one that I've 3D printed myself or anything like that. Uh, the theater route indicators are ones that I've 3D printed and attached on top. And then it's just regular two aspect signals from EVE models that I've used on all the signals um, at the end of the platforms and stuff like that. So I think this ended up looking pretty good. Like I said, th there is some amount of logic that I have to try and figure out. It's not computer programming at all. It really isn't. It's more, if this is on, then do this. If this is on, then do this. Um, just because I've got multiple different ways that trends could come in and out of the station now. But for the most part, it does seem to be working. Um, I have a little bit still trying to figure out in terms of bounce as I'm flipping some of these signals. Um, I need to add in delays so that they're not immediately changing. They'll wait a second for all the turnouts to set, and then I'll go ahead and, and figure out turning on uh, the correct signals. So, but otherwise, I'm quite happy with how all of this turned out. Come a little bit closer. So I did a little bit of weathering like I did on some of the other signal gantries. I haven't glued this down in place, which is why it almost looks like it's floating here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll glue that in place and then probably spill a little bit of ballast around it as well, just so that it blends in. Yes, I know that the, um, <laughs> the ladder is probably on the wrong side. If you look at over here where the relay boxes are, that's probably where the trackside workers would be coming in and try and check things out and uh, so yeah the, the ladder is really on the wrong side I kinda hummed and hard I took apart one of the Apple signal kits to try and figure out is there where that I could switch it over there wasn't an easy way that I could do that um, that would have looked all that good I mean I, I could have swapped this side completely but then this would have come in towards the track rather than being faced away from the track and then getting really close on that side so it's not perfect um, but overall, I'm quite happy with how this has turned out. Uh, the wire management inside is a little bit odd, and I haven't done a whole lot over here just because it's hanging out. It's not glued, so I'll tie that up a little bit. But otherwise, inside here, yeah, it's okay. It's not it's not terrible. And I, honestly, I'm just happy that this is finally in place, that I finally have the signal lights the correct way around. I've got those theater route indicators on top, and it's actually working now with that logic built in as I'm throwing the different routes. So I've done a lot of work with the signals around the platforms themselves on the south side, but one thing that I also wanted to make sure since I was down here was for that northbound main line. Um, I also had a couple of signals as well. So there's two signals really that you need to try and figure out. Um, there's this near one uh, on the left-hand side. That's designed so that if there's anything coming out of the station, uh, any DMUs, they're going to come over this cross over here. And so as they would do that, they're technically coming on the northbound main line to cross over here. 
and so this signal then needs to turn red. Slightly northbound trends are going to have to hold and wait for the DMU to come out. And then we've got another one over here, um, you know, just to be able to figure out, um, you know, probably is pretty much the same thing. Um, which way are you going to be going? Are the other points set correctly for your route? Um, functionally, that second one will, will pretty much always be green or always be red. It's not really best on any kind of routes that are being set. Um, you know, but I thought it was I thought it was a pretty nice little addition. The, the exact same three D printer gantries that I've done. The only difference is that they are a little bit shorter. Um, I think they're fifteen millimeters shorter um, in terms of the actual platform itself. They're the same height. Uh, but I guess the width of this platform is about 15 millimeters less than the other ones. Um, this one wouldn't have been as much of a problem, but because it's not raised up on a platform at all, um, there's not quite the clearance on coaches. Certainly on this one, on the far end, because it's right on the corner, if we try and move in. This one is then right as the coaches would start to sweep into platform 2 where the HST is here. And so with the, the regular printed 3D printed signal gantries that I had, um, that was just a little bit too long and so they were kind of catching on some of the coaches. Um, so they're slightly modified but otherwise they're the exact same design. And again I think it just adds a little bit of interest rather than just having signal southbound you've also got a little bit of something going northbound. Okay, so we've come over to uh, where DMUs will be getting parked up on platforms 9, 10, and 11, and 12, working from the left to the right, kind of front to back. So uh, that 105 closest to us is on platform 9, and then that uh, 101, I guess it is, is on platform 12. So in between that, on platforms 10 and 11, there's one of the double signal gantries that I had worked on. Try and move it a little bit closer so you can see. And so it's, it's still functionally the exact same design that I had used. All I had done was extend uh, the, the base of the platform. So whereas the, the ones on the northbound main that we just looked at were um, not quite as long so that uh, the coaches would be able to pass correctly, this one is in the inverse. It's a little bit longer than normal just so that you can fit two signal heads, two of the theater out indicators, and then the line just kind of drops down the middle. Um, the one thing that I do have there, which is why I'm not really showing the, the signals in action, kind of like I have uh, with these two middle signals here for platform 6 and then for platform 4, um, I don't have point motors ready to get installed. Um, and so those DMU platforms, platforms 9, 10, and 11, and 12, they're not controlled by GMRI right now. So it doesn't understand the state of those. They're not connected into one of the Octo coders. Um, and so right now, anytime that you would switch any of the routes for those platforms, all the four of those uh, signal heads will turn green or they will turn red. So the logic is all built in there. I just need to install the rest of those uh, replace, I guess, replace the Seeps PM1 point motors with the uh, server motors and get the Octopus 3 and Octocoder installed, um, but otherwise that's all done already. In terms of replacement switch uh, point motors, I did get this in the mail just today. Um, so it's the exact same that I've done on the first set of eight point motors that I've replaced. So it'll be the Octopus 3 with servos connected into them, and then the Octocoder that provides the DCC signals. Now that I've figured out, hopefully these will be pretty quick to get installed. I'm hoping just within an hour or two I'll be able to get all of these uh, all of these installed. I've got videos before on how I've gone ahead and done the first eight of those, how the Octopus 3, how the Octocoder works. So Looking forward to getting these installed. Um, this will cover then all of the south side of the station. I also then need to try and figure out some of these uh, Pico surface mounted points. Um, and then I may also hook in one or two on the north side of the station as well. I'm not sure. I might just leave it empty to be honest. Um, I'm not doing a whole lot on that north side. It's nowhere near as complicated <laughs> as this south side. Um, but yeah, looking forward to getting these installed. And then it will mean that I've got complete DCC control of all of the points down here. And I can also have all of the signal gantries responding correctly as their appropriate router set.
So at this point, the north end of the station uh, is looking rather bare. I have printed out all the signal gantries that are needed for this north side. Uh, we've been running the 3D printer over the last couple of nights. Got all of those ready. Um, I've got all of the signal, uh, the sorry, the signal heads and LEDs ready. I just need to kind of wire them all up. Um, but uh, that's probably going to be on hold for a couple of weeks. Uh, my parents are actually coming out from England to visit. They'll be here just in a couple of days time. Um, so I'm probably just not going to get an awful lot done. So kind of been pushing to get a bunch of a bunch of stuff done just while I had some motivation with the 3D printer and honestly to kind of, you know, show my dad what what's been going on out here. He's seen the pictures, he's seen the videos and so now I'll get to see it in person. But the north side of the station is what I'll then move on to um, probably as soon as I've got those uh, additional point motors installed. Um, I'll start to assemble up those signal gantries that have that have come off the 3D printer, get the signal lights installed, and then build up some more of those shift registers. And getting pretty quick at doing those. I can do a shift register in about 10 minutes now. Um, probably just wire it straight into that exact same Arduino that's controlling all the other ones. I think I figured out uh, what do I need. I'll need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I probably have one here for eight, so I think I am I would be having eight sets um, of signals around the actual platforms themselves, and then I've got one signal gantry here, and there would then be another signal gantry here. This is all looking very bare compared to the south side. Um, so yeah, I think in total um, I was going to end up with 14 signals uh, on this north side, which is actually pretty darn close. Um, I think I've got 14 on the south side as well. These are just a little bit more spread out with one signal gantry and then what will be a second signal gantry, but uh, the north side hasn't been completely abandoned, um, although I, I did somewhat uh, chicken out on doing the rest of the ballasting around the points and then I just kind of stopped um, just at the throat of the session, but uh, this will come next in time once I've wrapped up the rest of the point motors on the south side. That's pretty much where I'm at. Hopefully it's been kind of cool seeing some of these signals in action, seeing some trends moving around. Um, I have somewhat started on sensors as well. I don't want to get into it too much. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do it, but I have got an IR sensor. It'll actually be on this fret bypass line uh, right in front of the Class 37. Um, it is mounted and it, it does work. What I need to figure out is that logic in JMRI. Um, Again, it, it's not computer programming, it is just me trying to figure out, okay, as that sensor would trip, then how do I set all of the different lights accordingly? Um, I think I need to start looking at how I essentially break all of this down into blocks. Um, even though I'm not, I don't have electrically the layout separate into different blocks in JMRI, I can define what a particular block would be. And I think I need to set the IR sensor to control the state of that block, and then the lights would maybe get their status from the block. Um, if anyone's done much in JMRI in terms of actually installing physical IR sensors, um, there are different alternatives. I, I understand that. There are ways where you can do actual um, current detection, um, where you'll actually pick up is there current on the track and use that for your block detection. Um, so photoresistor sensors was another way. I'm looking at IR sensors, but really, if, if people have um, got experience in setting up JMRI with sensors to then be able to control different blocks, or how how do you chain lights? What I'm essentially what I'm getting at is I can have the sensor here so that as the tram passes this one signal gantry, uh, the light will go from green to red. Um, but how do I then get the trip? What I want is when the last of these wagons would then pass a sensor under here and say, okay, now you can go back to green when it passes there, um, you know, where it had gone red, then it could go green. Um, I need to figure out the logic of how I chain those together. Um, so that that is somewhat in progress as well. Again, that's probably going to be on hold for a couple of weeks or so now with my parents coming to visit. But hopefully you've enjoyed this. Um, you know, just quick updates on the rest of the lights that are in place. See a few trends running. Um, it is kind of cool to be able to do that. Even, even as I've been out here installing some of these signal gantries, I've just had trends uh, running around and around the shed, and it has been kind of cool. So uh, let me know what you think. Do subscribe and follow along so you can see once uh, the sensors get in place and once I start on the north side of the station. And uh, we'll be back soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.